Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to discuss free agency, or the Cowboys version of free agency, which is a lack of free agency. In the beginning of the offseason, Dallas comes out and says, we're not going to go ahead and sign any free agents, we're going to go ahead and just sign our own guys. And we are just going batshit crazy when Cowboy Nation finds out that Dallas is just signing their own guys. And when we go off, finally off this rail... And we sign other guys like a Washington, James Washington. The last time we had a James Washington on our team, it was on the defense, and that was during the Super Bowl years. So that's a hopefully bodes well. But he is a guy that has torn us up in the past. So he is a receiver. No, he's not a Amari Cooper type. And that whole thing during this offseason has just been just crazy because you knew in the offseason what you wanted to do with Amari Cooper. Now, you could have put it out there, hey, we're going to trade him. Go ahead and put him on the block. Let people know, give them time to kind of like percolate and figure out what they want to do. No, you give it like a week and then you don't get the demands and then you go with a fifth round pick. It's just really bad after bad mouthing what he brought to your organization. Let's be truthful, guys. The $20 million that he was kind of demanding, it's understandable that he wasn't living up to that contract. But the fact is that, you know, what did he do? He got open. Now, within the scheme... The scheme was just a guys get open and we'll throw it to you. And when we went against the zone, you know, he wasn't the type of receiver that's just going to go against the zone and get open. So can he run around and get open off that route? Yes, he was an amazing, probably the best in the league when it came to that. But could he get open once the zone hit? No. So when it came to this offense, no, he wasn't living up to that. But do I want Lamar Cooper? Hell yeah, I want a guy like that. Why wouldn't you want a number one receiver? And you could always go out and get another guy. I don't think he was eating that much. It's, so it has to be further on in there than what they're telling us. So when you look at other weapons like, of course, Schultz, who signs a franchise tag and is getting paid to close to $11 million, that's a whole bad situation. And you're just hoping that Dallas signs Schultz to a long-term deal where his deal is more like 5 to $6 million per year on our hit. And yeah, he may be hitting bonuses, but he's not making that towards our salary cap and I think that's going to be a big thing going forward as well so so many offensive things being put in Gallup coming back he's not going to be available to the end of the season so where's the receiver going to come from is it already on the roster is it a semi Fajoko? Noah Brown coming back I mean Noah Brown the guy that I thought always was CeeDee Lamb last year I was like okay well if he's gone maybe now when I see CeeDee Lamb I'll know it's him but it looks like we're going another season with ah, oh, oh, oh no that was him okay no that was him so on the defensive side, there were so many debacles. I mean, you had Demarcus Lawrence, our leader, being shortballed when it comes to the contract negotiation. You had Randy Gregory with his old switcheroo. And I honestly believe that, you know, it's a business decision on both sides. So do I believe Randy says that? Ah, maybe to a certain degree. Do I believe what the Cowboys say? Again, to a certain degree. So in the middle, there's the truth. And so we really honestly will never really know what the truth is. And the only they will know. And it's not great on Randy's side. Because you know, I'm pretty sure he had a lot of guys on him believing that the Cowboys organization was really honestly shortballing him and probably putting extra stuff in the contract. But when you're bad-mouthing already a week or two out of coming out of the organization, I mean, come on. I mean, it's hard to keep your treaded footing when it comes to this whole story. So... When it comes to other pieces like of this defense, I mean, there were so many things that needed to come back, like J. Ron Curse. Our defense, to me, a defensive leader that came out of nowhere, of course had the green dot, and when it comes to safety, that's just unheard of. I mean, I've heard of other safeties that have been amazing, but never to lead the defense calling plays, allowing guys like Market Parsons to make their plays and not worry about if other people are in their position. So bringing a guy like that back on a two-year contract, even Malik Hooker, where I, again, a great year, I don't trust he to be healthy all the time. So he's a good backup. I think he's a great backup. I think finally the safety position is something that's actually formidable in this defense. So where's the free agency going? Can we sign Bobby, Bobby Wagner? Yes, we can. Will we? Probably not. Because there's only one guy really in this within this free agency that could teach a guy like Parsons. And that is a Wagner type. Um, so there's not very many guys like him. So he can change our defense. But it's just not something that's feasible, especially with what the Dallas Cowboys love to do, and that's just draft, draft, draft. And let's just sign our own guys. So that recipe is only going to take them so far. So can they hit, you know, 
a, a right side of a barn with you know being blindfolded I, I'm, I'm hoping we're all hoping that they can but unless they make a splash of somehow into free agency and make a difference like a charles haley that you're trading for i don't care if it's a trade free agency is free agency and just going out and getting somebody that's not already on this roster is going to be a very big key to trying to take that next step so are we better than last year as of right now no before the draft now can we get better heck yeah signing a guy like wagner could make our defense automatically look better now will they be can it be cohesive yes i think so especially when you plug a guy like that in i think you put him on any defense and wagner is a difference maker difference maker so um again i want to just talk about free agency but again there was a very big lack thereof so it does not bode well for what Stephen Jones will bring. And you're just hoping that he's going to be one of those owners that just kind of like, I want to just be the face now and, and let somebody else do the finance. So let's all keep our fingers crossed when it comes to that. But when it comes to the rest of what Dallas is going to do, we all know what is happening right now. This is where they kind of turn it on that one o'clock in the morning at the bar where they're going to look for the desperate people to try to take home and and that that's kind of been their strategy for the past couple of years now when you got a guy like will mcclay ready for the draft it's hard not to get excited about this draft and what this defense and what this offense can add and the kickers that we need and the punter that we overpaid it's it, there's so many things that are happening within this organization the coaching that could possibly be the coaching on the defense that could possibly move up the guy that's on the hot seat that shouldn't be because he had a better record than what we had the previous year so there's so many things boiling up under the surface. So what will Dallas do? We don't know. What will Dallas do in this draft? We don't know. But we can guess and we can speculate and we can hope. So again, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all your support. I'm Primetime Field. Like always, don't forget to always ring that bell. <laughs>